Well, hey all, thanks for um, for joining me this morning. Uh, I know it's a little bit late today. We had a we had a meeting earlier, just trying to figure out where we're all going to be in the next few weeks here. Um, so all these videos are going to be. I'm trying to get out before ten o'clock or so. Um, so anyway, just keep an eye out for them. You know, things are changing fast. In the last 24 hours, I mean, there are measures introduced to contain the spread, the whole spread of, you know, COVID-19 and Connecticut has joined other states and shutting down restaurants, gyms, bars, dance clubs, movie theaters and all that. And so before I tell you what all we're going to be doing, what I think is important is that we just fill our hearts and our minds with the truths that will remain. Right. So I was reading Psalm 77 this morning. Hey, well, let me pray. Um, Father, I just I just pray even right now as all those who are watching this, um, your peace would just flood them, God. Your peace, Lord. You give peace in the midst of the storm, God, and we just ask for that right now, Lord. And you're just um, you would just surround about everyone right now. May we just have a time of allowing your word to minister to us in Jesus' name, Amen. So I was reading Psalm 77 this morning. I just thought it was so awesome. Um, listen, listen to what it says here. Psalm 77 says, um, it's, a, it's to the chief musician, to Jonathan, a Psalm of Asaph, right? I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice, and, and he gave ear to me. So I'd like that first, just that first line, like, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice. And that's really good instruction right there. Just cry out to God with your voice. Don't, don't do it just within. I mean, we, you know, sometimes we do that whole thing of where we're, you know, we're just praying, you know, quietly to ourselves. And then that's good. It's got its place, right? But do it out loud too. Do it, do it out loud. Cry out to God with your voice. And, and if you know, you find if you get used to doing it like that, you'll find that you'll be enlisting God in more of your activities and more of your thoughts, even more of your panics. And there's that promise that follows when you cry out to God with the awe of your, of your, um, with, with your voice. It says, and he gave ear to me. He heard me. And it goes on, it says, um, in the days of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. And some of you, you know exactly what that is, right? Waking up in the middle of the night, you got these troubling thoughts that are just continuing to go on in one's mind. But listen to what, what the psalm says. He says, I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. So he says, let this kind of sink in. Like, in other words, the psalmist knows exactly what we're going through. But he does something about it. And look at the next stanza, verse four, it says, um, you hold my eyelids open, I'm troubled that I can't speak. You, you have, I've considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. And listen, and this is what he does. I call to remembrance my song in the night and I meditate within my heart and my spirit makes diligent search. So he says this, in the midst of all the trouble, I consider the days of old, the years of ancient times, and then I call to remembrance a song in, in, in the night. So for some of this stuff, you have to be proactive for, right? I have to make a list ahead of time. So I can make a list in my own life and like where God has been faithful and what God has done in my life. I can, I can go and recount through the scripture like he's going to do a little bit later on and just say, okay, well, God, look at where, what you've done in the past and look where I am right now, right? But what I would suggest is, you know, make a list ahead of time of what God has done in your life or in your family, what you've seen him do just in others or your, maybe your answered prayers and so forth and, and list them, list them right out like that. You know, um, I know it's song in the night. You have to have that ahead of time because if you're waking up in the middle of the night and you're troubled or something, you're not going to have a song, right? But if you have it written down, you'll have it to pull from. And what you're doing is, is you're just taking these thoughts and the anxious thoughts that are captive and you're bringing them and making them submissive to Jesus Christ. You're filling your heart with that which is eternal. You're remembering and reminding yourself of what God does. And so going on, he says, um, he said, and this, listen to this, he says, uh, asks a bunch of questions. Will the Lord cast off forever? So what's the answer to that? Okay, w will, he, will he be favorable no more? What's the answer? 
you know, has his mercy ceased forever? In other words, will he deny his name? You know, um, has his promise failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Another part of his name. Has his anger shut up his tender mercies? Say that. So again, let that become part of you. Think about that. Then I said, and this is where he recounts from God's word. Okay, but then I said in my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and talk of all of your deeds in the way of God in this, in, or, or sorry, your way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. Like Psalm 73 said, you know, I was disturbed by all these things until I went into the sanctuary of God. And that's, that's where everything starts to make sense is in his presence. Um, who is, who is great? Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the people. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. And you could go on, you could read the rest of it. And I think that's, you know, it's an awesome psalm. You go look at, you could pray through it and all that. Hey, so um, now let me just talk to you quick about some of the updates as far as the church goes. You know, um, in, our, in our land right now, the whole region, they're trying to contain this whole COVID-19 thing, right? And so they've asked us to take part in that and do our part in that Um and so, you know, kind of, you know, isolate ourselves and stuff to a, to a degree and all that. And so, um, as a church, as a church, um, look, it's time to be the church more than ever, right? And do what he's been given us, that he's given us to do, to take up those things. As a follower of Jesus, I, I think now is the time of impact, right? Now is the time where, you know, we can make the most eternal difference. I mean, we're actually, you know, we're in a spot of where things are shutting down all around us, you know, and, um, and we're, we're kind of being shut in to a, to a degree, right? Some of the freedoms that we're so used to have been removed from us. Look, we can do exponentially more shut in than we had all those freedoms. Well, well how? You know, because all our meetings are suspended and stuff like that. And, and by the way, that's, that is what we're doing. We are suspending all our group meetings um, at this point in time, but we have alternatives. So, um, so, so what can we do in this, in this time of what this is all going on? Um, how can we be of the most impact? Um, number one, by prayer. I, I cannot emphasize that enough. What you can do by prayer is so much greater than what you can do by just going around and trying to, you know, work as hard as you can. Like, look, God knows the day that we're living in. He knows the, the boundaries that have kind of been put up around us. We can pray, but it's going to require work. You have to be purposeful to limit your distractions and, and what you're going to be looking at, you know, um, during these times, like maybe even when you're bored, right? So make sure you're limiting your directions, uh, uh, distractions. Maybe you, you take time and you set it apart to pray. So you might actually like schedule your day, right? So 5 a.m. or whatever, whatever time you wake up, I don't know what it is. Um, when, when you wake up, you're like, I'm going to spend some time in prayer here. And then at noontime, I'm going to spend time in prayer here. And then at seven o'clock, I'm going to spend time in prayer there. And you could, you know, you could pray through your day. Like some people say, well, I pray, you know, all day long and all that. Yeah, but you have the opportunity now to set times of prayer and be very purposeful about it. So I would just say, I encourage you to do that. Look, we've been doing a prayer course um, on Thursday nights, and there was an awesome one that we looked at last week. It's called Intercession. If you go to theprayercourse.org, you'll find session three on Intercession. Encourage you, watch that. And I'm probably going to mention that again on another video as well. Um, second thing that you can do is you're going to get involved in a life group. Now, our life groups are over at this point in time. Last week um, ended our life groups. We were on a two-week rest, and then we were going to start up again. Well, what we're going to do is this week we are reorganizing, and we're getting a robust you know, digital platform. Um, and by next week, 
we are going to encourage every single person to get involved in a life group. Just sign up for a life group. And I will keep emphasizing this over and over and over again. You'll be able to go to calvarysouthbury.info and just sign up for a life group. Um, you know, this is the way that we are going to be connecting with each other primarily. Oh, yes, we'll have our Sunday morning things going on on digital, right? But then um, life groups. And, you know, these are going to be your care centers, spiritually, emotionally, and even, even if need be, physically. Okay, so next week we're going to be really looking at that. And then, and then third, you know, get in on a Zoom prayer, or, or, or I should say a Zoom prayer. Um <clears throat> We set up prayer online. Um, we're going to have set times for those. We'll be sending out. We'll be sending out email. There'll be Facebook that will be up, and um, Facebook will have notices about the prayer groups and when they're meeting and so forth. Um, we had one last night at seven. It was phenomenal. It was great. Great to just see people and just to pray together. Um, so we are going to have those. Again, keep, your, keep a lookout for that. Tomorrow we're going to be sending out an email bulletin and it'll have more information on that because we're, we're setting a lot of these things up even today. And I know for some of you, look, the whole digital platform stuff is intimidating. I get it. We are going to help you walk through it. We can do it over phone. We'll be doing it over instructions um, by sending those instructions to you. But listen, you're going to need to embrace the tech. You're going to have to. It's This is a season of where you just have to, and you can like, ignore it after this, okay? But we've got some weeks ahead. And we need to be in touch with one another. We need to be praying for one another. You will find that you can actually fellowship with one another online and through the digital. And, and it, it's, it will be good. I can tell you it will be. Because God knows the day in which we live right now. Hey, so let me pray for you guys. Thanks for being here with me. Um, Father, you know, all these things, all these things. Life has just changed so drastically. And yet, God, you knew you knew these days before we even heard of what like COVID-19 was like. You knew about it way back then. You knew where we would be walking right now today. And God, I just pray for each of us that we would be wise. God, that um, even as there is this, you know, this, this crackdown of, of going out and all of that, God, that, that we would help do our part in... Um, helping to just suppress the spread of this thing going on. And God, so we just look to you. God, may our fellowship with one another, even though we're not meeting face-to-face, -face, like physically, um, may that digital face-to-face -face work out beautifully. May you be honored in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'll, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. God bless you.